Welcome to The Invasion Session 1. I am Ryan, the GM. It is the 15th of April 2020. Uh, happy birthday, me. Uh, here hey. are the players. Hi there, my name is Gregor. I'm going to be playing Adair, a Air Genasi, who's a bit of a rogue. Hey guys, I'm Scott. I will be playing Alvin Giget, Warren, the Drekka, Forge Carver, Starling, Pretra, but for short, you can just call me Tink. I will be a Gnome Artificer. Hi everyone, I'm Calum A. I'll be playing Cognac, the alcoholic turtle, and I'm a bit of a misguided brute. Good evening, I'm Alexander, and I'll be playing Fleabite, the Skaven, who's just terrible at everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, good evening. I'm Ewan, and I'll be playing Layuda, the irreproachable Loxodon druid. Hi there. I'm Callum B, and I'll be playing Thea to Or, the priestess of chaos. Perfect. She's a Kalishtar, I believe. Yeah, she is. She's definitely she is. a Kalishtar. Um, I mean, that was good. Yeah, it's all right. There we go. Perfect. Gonna need to mute Scott. Mission passed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, level twenty, everybody. Uh, can't wait for the finale. Um, yeah, oh, that was the finale. Um, <laughs> has everyone made sure that inspiration ha has been marked on your character sheet? I should have marked it on everyone's uh, for oh, you. Oh right, I thought that was I thought that was an accident. Uh, yes, no. indeed. Nope, I marked it on it and give her these if you haven't done it yourselves. I uh, have. Everyone gets to Thank start with much, inspiration. Yeah. Uh, because well, you thank me now, but it's because you'll need it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, no, it was just because I feel like every game should start every day with inspiration if it's 5e, because it's deadly enough, especially if you're at level 1. Um, Indeed. We're yeah. all going to die! Um, probably for completing a goal, by the way, as well, just off the back of our goals chat, I, I'll probably award inspiration that way. Uh, maybe through the bonds as well. It depends how well that goes. We'll play all that by ear. But if that system works out really well and we use it enough, that's how you will get inspiration for that side of the game, not anything else randomly obscure or disruptive. Um, which makes sense. None of that affects how you would get the help stuff that I keep making sure Callum lets me do in his game. Um, just so you know. All that stuff's still there. Uh, there is a pinned, or there should be, yeah, there is. If you go into the pinned uh, tabs on our Discord, right at the top, there's a little pin. Go into that. The first link that's there is the quick reference for any of the abilities or moves that. I've already got it all. Like the generic D&D stuff. It's a handy guide. I recommend you bookmark it because it's just useful. Um, obviously, any questions about it, let me know. I, ideally relevant to the game, maybe not. We'll see. Uh, beyond that, a couple of things I want to go over now. If we can now just go back down the same order, but get everybody to describe their characters to each other, because as I said, you will have stared at each other over the last, <laughs> you know, say, couple of months to a year, you know, that you could have worked together anywhere between several months and a year. So, uh, Adair, do you want to go first? <clears throat> so, um, well, I will start off with. Hi, my name's Adair. Uh, pronounced in my native tongue, it sounds more like I'm just breathing heavily. Uh, so everybody can pronounce it their own certain way, as long as I know which me you're talking to. I'm around 6'2 in height. Um, I've got very... My, basically, my picture is who I am. Um, same skin, and colour. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, exact same skin type, uh, body build, everything. Um, as you can see, my character appears to be quite well dressed, um, but all these things he acquired not through coin. Uh, but everything I own has a story. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm about twenty. Well, I'd say about twenty-two years of age. So I'm for quite young. About about twenty feet tall. Yeah. Right. Yeah, twenty feet <laughs> tall. <as well. laughs> um. Yeah, that's pretty much me. Yeah, perfect. Uh, Anybody get any questions about Adair yet that comes up based on his description? Uh, or does anybody want any more detail than that? All good? Mm, yep. Good. Uh, yep. So. Next up. Do we need to know like classes or? Uh, no. 
You don't need to know it. Okay. Um, we'll just figure it out. Okay. You'll find out in due time. <laughs> um, yep, so I am playing Alvin, who is... Yep, that wee guy there. He's a gnome. Perfect. And that's it. That's it. Cool. Move on from there, yeah? I, I uh, like it. What I'll do I, is I'm look, gonna, I love that art, by the way. I'm gonna, That's just fantastic. I'm going to go a couple of steps back because I think I want to talk about the races and their place in the world a tiny bit as we go forward, since she's are all different. Um, Janassi. There are four types of Janassi in the world. Um, there are like Earth, Air, Fire, War, and they are very rare in our world. They used to be the people of the land. They were like the great civilization back in the day. Many, many, many we years ago. We were the ago. dominant species. So yeah, like and ideally we own that accent. And um, yeah, <laughs> that's a premier. I just want to go over like a wee, a wee bit of a tip of information per per race. Um, so the fact that there's an air genasi in your party is kind of rare. Um, they're not common at all. You might have noticed this though. Going with the group though, we're all quite rare. So that's that's fun. Um, mm. Then obviously. We've got Alvin. Um, gnomes exist. Uh, they generally don't frequent populated areas. Uh, they stick to their own places. You've got like forest gnomes and rock gnomes. Um, like so, basically gnomes that live in the Smurf land and gnomes that uh, live underground. Uh, they ge generally keep to themselves, but they are known as about gnomes that are known. Uh, whereas they're a lot more common to see gnomes than it is Janassi. Right. Anything else you want to add, Scott, about your... Uh, yeah, yep. so um, I am currently at 117 years young. I am of a small stature of only 3 foot 6. Um, so my skin's been... Because I've been living above ground, my skin's got a bit of an olive text like tone to it. Uh, my hair is black, normally full of soot, because whatever the hell I'm making tends to blow up. Um, yeah, and you know, and you don't wash pretty much because I'm too busy doing other shit. You don't want to wash away the experience gained from the experiment, duh. Exactly, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, perfect. I, I've covered gnomes. All right, next, I, I am Cognac, um, the turtle. Mm -hmm. Um, I was bought by some Yuan Ti pure blood. Uh, slave trader nobles and they thought I was just a normal turtle but I was actually a big turtle and then they eventually um, adopted me unwillingly but they treated me like crap and I became an alcoholic and a misguided uh, brute um, turtles are not rare to the world but they exist at the far corners of the continent rather than where I was raised um yeah I mean you, say you, did, you did my job for me as well I only really wanted your roots <laughs> to be fair but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am about 7 feet I am 45 years old which is very old for a turtle and very tall normally they're not as tall but yeah you're definitely a tall alcoholic <laughs> yeah a tall alcoholic um, I wasn't given an education but um Living in a court, I am slightly worldly. Self-taught. Hmm. Indeed. Yeah, so primarily, turtles, not so much rare uh, in the sense of the entire civilization of them exist. However, it is unlikely to encounter them on a day-to-day basis. I am... Um, usually found near coastal places. They have a massive underwater like rebuild effort because their city about, you know, 40 odd, 50 years ago, big natural disaster wrecked the place and they sold off a lot of their young to try and pay for the rebuild because they couldn't afford to feed them. So That's savage. It's horrible, but it was that or all of their people die. So that's, that's my origin good story. Business savvy, actually. I think that's good business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That, that, that's almost as bad as uh, what happened to Monday. Yeah. That is bad, actually. Yeah. So we've got a, a turtle noble as well. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Uh, next on our list. 
Um, I am Fleabite, so I am uh, Skaven. Um, I, I look pretty much like that, but I've got like a, a just some like dirty, grubby clothes, and I try and keep a hood over my head because people usually just scream and start throwing things at me when they see me. Sorry. And I also just don't like the sun, so I try to keep um, any natural light away from me. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty mangy. Um, you don't really want to like catch anything from me. But what about uh, flea bite? <laughs> Cheap joke, I know. Sorry. <laughs> um, you 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 might see something more of. of um, there, there there might be a, the odd person that I'm talking to, but you know I'm sure that will come up later. Yeah, uh, height, etc. Oh, uh, like um, four foot, but I stoop a lot, mm -hmm. um, like quite hunched over. Yeah, um, cool, cool. So, so is that four foot while well hunched over, or four foot no. hunched? Um, four foot and then hunched down to. I realise I said or, but it said the same thing long. twice. So uh, I mean, I'm just going to edit that <laughs> in post. Um, I won't. Uh, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, so Skaven aren't part of this world. So, yeah, there you go. There's your backstory Ooh. for uh, that race. They're, they don't exist. So, <laughs> perfect. Next. Uh, just for flea bite, I wrote, uh, probably has rabies. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Just don't let them bite you. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I am Laida. I am a Loxodon. Um, about 372 years old which even for Loxodon is old. Mm -hmm. uh, getting on a bit. Um, I'm eight foot and one inches tall <laughs> and I weigh about 421 pounds. So he's a, a large car. He's, he's a big boy. Yeah. He's a chunky lad. I'm yeah. a big boy. Uh, There's a lot of Lauda. Yeah. Elephant face. <laughs> I've got like green eyes. Um, no hair, but you can see also like moss growing over me. Um, sort of thing that you'd expect to be quite irritating, but I just seem to sort of take it in my stride and accept it. Um, so yeah, slightly greenishy grey skin, probably just coloured by the moss, but yeah. Nice. And there's a Living really... la vida louder. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. So I'm picking up on a lot, a lot of this party like to wash them. I, I, that's mm. what I've noticed so far, at least. Um... I, I do also have quite, like, fancy clothes, but they've been a bit tattered from worn down from yeah, they were probably. Wild for a I was gonna say they were probably fancy when you started your wildlands yeah. journey, and then you slowly just didn't replace them, I guess, and just maybe yeah. patched them up as you went. Um, Lockstones, uh, they exist in the world. They generally keep to themselves. They are pretty technologically advanced um, away in their own city. The the city oh. finally has a name that isn't just Elephant Wakanda, which is good. So it's uh, <laughs> Barus. Um, so Barris is the the big kind of walled city of the Loxodons. They aren't so keen on druidy nonsense because that's you learning to live with nature instead of mastering it or you know dominating it, to use a better word. So yeah, mm -hmm. they're all about taking control of situations and like overcoming obstacles and yeah. Like nature is an obstacle that you kind of worked with, and they were like, mm, "No, no thanks." Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, they're. I mean, really, I think we're saying they're elephant assholes. I am. That's what we're really <laughs> yeah, saying. I am. Um, to but, put it bluntly, but it is unlikely any of you besides Lauda have ever been even remotely close to Barus. Uh, it's probably quite remote in that regard. I am. Um, I think, again, the party of super rare creatures. I guess I am um, probably unlikely that uh, you would see Bloxodon in just wandering around. This is probably super super rare as well. I am, um, but I feel like that's redundant now at this point hmm. since everybody's kind of super rare. I uh, see ya next. Hi, uh, Thea. Um, the priestess of chaos. The priestess of chaos. I did click to make her zoom, but you know. And she disappeared like straight away. No, 
Oh, she's dead. <laughs> yeah, it's it actually happened before. Your token doesn't want to ever zoom. Um, That's because she doesn't want to be seen just now. Like, um, also, who's clicking something? Because it's coming through on the mic as well. Oh, wait, that may be me. Sorry. That's okay. Possibly. Didn't realize it was that sensitive. Yeah. It's okay. It's just coming through. Thought we didn't notice, but we did. <sighs> Sorry about that. That's okay. So yes, uh, Thea is a, a Kasathan. No, she's not. Uh, no, she's not. <laughs> she's a <laughs> Yeah, like this. Oh, look, doing it again doesn't actually... I'm just going to... Here, we're going to do manual zoom. <laughs> I am now huge! Mega Thea! <laughs> Mega Thea! Does that reduce the image quality, or is it just like... Coliseum open? mode! Um, I still have the elephant in mind. That's because you need to click off it. Yeah, I have quite an Alita Battle Angel Eyes going on there with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yes, no, she's not a Kasathan, she's a Kalashtar. A Kalashtar, yeah. No, a Kalashtar. Not a Kasathan. They're from no, Starfinder. No, that's something completely different. <laughs> um, she is 5'3", weighing in at 136 pounds, if you must know. But okay. I think that's a bit rude. Do you wow. weigh more than me? Because you're a gnome. <laughs> Your gnome. I am the gnome. The gnome. Uh, just like I'm the prince, the priestess. I was gonna say princess there. Um, her eyes are a dull grey. She has long ass silver hair. Basically, the picture, um, except not quite. Um, she carries around with her uh, a couple of theater masks. Um, let's face it. I am playing like. A discount hexadecimal from Reboot. That's basically what we're we're going for here. I think if MD gets that reference, uh, will to come to the cool club. Quite frankly. Yes. Yeah. No. Um. It was on the. I saw the picture. And yeah. I was just extremely happy. Yeah. Same thing. Hexadecimal. I totally know what that means. Best character in existence from the a TV show. Greatest ever. From anything ever. Uh, uh, I will not be attempting to do her voice because that's impossible and. Yeah. Yeah. Quite frankly, I just wish I had that. Yeah, that would make me so happy. Yep. Um, and yeah, so she puts on she puts on these masks um, when she is um, uh, about to cast spells and stuff and to help her concentrate. Yeah, um, and on that as well, like we've got a the Kalashtar are like a, like a variation of humans. Some humans go through this process where. Um, they can kind of develop a second consciousness, like a, a kind of dual mind. Um, they find it kind of difficult to express themselves, so hence why they usually default to having these masks that they use to then kind of share their, um, you know, expressions right. more vividly. Uh, all this is actually me ad libbing right now, Scott. So don't seem like just don't be too impressed. <laughs> um, oh, okay. But that is a. You can usually tell someone's a Kalashtar because they're likely to hide their face for that reason. Be a blunt fuck. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they also might just act different ways with you at different points in time completely. Like some might even forget they met you if, you know, their dual mind kind of gets in the way. Um, but yeah, they're generally quite rare, funnily enough. You know that, that phrase we're used to now? That really common phrase in this party? Um, <laughs> a collection of rarities. Mm -hmm. So. How exquisite. I should have called it the Emporium. That's what I should have called the, uh, mm. the game. Mm. Uh, let's give it a lap. Still bugs me that I can't zoom in with you. I don't know why you're immune it's to the zoom. Shall I, shall I, um... It is a Skeksis. <laughs> it's such a Skeksis noise, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah. Shall oh, I shall no. I shall I um try and redrag it on, see if it makes a difference? It did not. I already did that. No, I did it not. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Never mind then. It's not fine. It'll Sorry. Work it out. Luckily broken token rhymes. Yeah. Just to clarify, Kalistar beer and um, telepathic, but you can speak as well, right? I, I don't actually think you are telepathic, are you? Let's have a look. I thought they were I can I believe I have oh, wait, was that the, the nope, other that one? That was me. Nope. So they've got, they've got very strong minds, but I feel like that stuff I want you to kind of do in character. Right. Right. That's a lot of mechanical talk that we'll shy away from as best we can. Because you needing yes, to know I if mean... they're telepathic doesn't matter unless there's been a bond that matters with that, right? You see, I'm trying to focus this. So mm -hmm. yeah. 
Um, now if Callum decides, and that's Callum B, uh, if he ever decides, or I should say Thea, if she ever decides that she wants to speak to you telepathically, if she can do that, which I don't actually know if you can or not, then yeah, that'll come up and at least, at least answer that. We'll also go back and answer questions like, if Thea turns to Adair and says something telepathically, I'll then ask, you know, is this something that you do a lot with the party members? Do you speak to them this way a lot? Are they used to you doing this? So that you're not just like, I have noticed you're speaking with your mind today. This is new. Get out of my head, devil woman. Yeah, pretty much. Um, something else about the uh, Thea character is that she is a priestess of chaos. Chaos is a no, 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 no. I, I believe you misspoke there. I definitely the did not. Uh, she is the that's... priestess of chaos. Yes, that, that, that's Doctor GM to you, and uh... no, Doctor GM. Apologies. It's not. Um... The doctorate is fake, like the game, and uh, yeah, the. <laughs> Yeah, so she is a priestess of chaos, which is worshipped by very odd people, very strange, usually darker people in terms of uh, their personalities. Um, chaos is exactly what it sounds like. It is chaos. There is variations of how it's worshipped as well in the world. Um, rarely good, put it that way. It is rarely a good thing to come across chaos wor worshippers. Um, sounds lovely. Yeah, there are also. So we're in for a fun tree. There are many, mm -hmm. many religions of the world, as and when we require them, is how far I'll go into that. And yeah, I think that's as kind of nicely done, or kind of visuals at least for everyone. No. Yeah. Good session, guys. Yeah, you, you all work for an organization. Um, it can be self, self fueled, if you will. I also love that Alvin's picture, by the way, is the. Uh, Grumbar's picture, and I love that it really makes it look like you're a half orc hiding in a gnome, in his body. On, what, sorry? On roll twenty. You've said it to just names only, I think, but. Uh, you're, oh, um, I'm gonna change that. That's funny. Oh, <laughs> um, oh I'm still, I'm still. You're still Zig. Only... Yep. I'm still Zig. Okay. Now, as for roll twenty, I'm assuming I think it's only maybe Gregor that doesn't know this uh, by now, but. Uh, did we put advanced shortcuts on for you, Gregor? See if you go up to the top right where the cog is on roll 20. Uh, it should have like a tick box next to use advanced shortcuts. And then he'll remember that he probably muted himself. I did, uh, but also I'm um, double checking. Yes, uh, the keyboard shortcuts are there. Perfect. So what that means is if you press S, just to make it become the select tool. If you click and hold with left, it'll ping the map. If you grab your token, you can drag your token around. And if you, while you're holding and dragging your token, if you then click with the right button, you can make waypoints and then it will move your token as per the waypoints. You can also press I'm Q. I tend to follow that, but I have no idea what you meant. It's okay. We've also got like the drawing on the map again. Um, so the ah, Q. Right. I didn't have those things enabled. I know. And then Q lets you quantify, as the way I try and remember it, and you can measure things with Q. Ah, Ideally, okay. I wouldn't mind if um, people used Q as the default, because everybody can see that before it happens. And that lets me know the path you want to take. If you then, while holding Q, just press Shift once and let go of it, it will stay there until you click it again, as in the mouse, um, which is handy. Okay. I have uh, no idea what I'm doing, but okay, that's... Yep. Bringing up numbers and stuff. So it's, it's okay. Cool. We can deal with it as and when. Right. Everybody back to your places. I, I think everyone's doing this. <laughs> um, so you hold S and then click and drag. No, you don't need to hold S, no. S is just to oh, move sure. you to the select tool. It just saves you. See the bar at the left, which has got the arrow? Oh, I it see It just lets you select yeah. between the two most used ones, which is selecting your token and then measuring for your token as well. Makes sense. I take it the measurings for Movement. if you're trying to move somewhere, archery, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, pretty much measuring, yeah. Pretty standard. It does say it in the name, so yeah. Yep, it's okay. But again, worth covering, because obviously there'll be stuff that comes up that oh, you no, might yeah. not be familiar with, so I'd rather we covered everything we have to. I am... oh, no, I'm happy to do so, and thank you for doing so. Good, good, good. I... Beyond that, though, right, you were out on a quest of some kind. You... Mm -hmm. Are, you're working for somebody within the capital city, which is called Little Bellinor. Little Bellinor is a city 
built off the back of a bunch of universities that got together for like shared research purposes. Um, primarily elves, humans are the majority of the races here, um, but you do get occasionally like like Yanti pure blood nobles, which are like kind of weird snake people. Um, you also get obviously all of you guys because you are all based in Little Belenor. Um, it is essentially run by like a kind of council of all the races uh, that govern the place. Uh, it's near the water as well, it's got a big harbour and yeah it's fairly fairly distant from like Barris and Atuin, the only other two places named in this world. So <laughs> yeah there are a lot of ruins scattered across the the world just in various states of decay purely because of the long since fallen empire of the Genasi as well. Um, just like any good old elven ruins from most things this is our version of that in this world. Uh, however, who do you want to work for? Does MD have any like strong ideas? Do you want to be like direct employees of like the like the council for the the city? Do you want to work for like a like a university or a noble in there? Do you want to work for yourselves? In which case, you then have to justify who you work for. Um, in that I regard, I prefer being independent. I know you do. I think I went without saying with <laughs> literally everything you said so far, dear. Just, just, just <laughs> had to clarify. I like the idea of being a group syndicate for the six of us that take on random jobs. Okay, yeah. That can be, yeah. That could be something. Uh, did anybody else get any other ideas? So, so far I've got independent group syndicate. Um, I mean, could work for a mercenaries guild or whatever like that, but that could still also be quite... And an independent thing, but that could also, you know, just be how we get our jobs. It could be, yeah. Um, well, how long have we been in the city as uh, a party? Well, you've been working together for anywhere between a year and, like, minimum, like, uh, ideally three months minimum. Ideally, I keep pushing that number up, but I think three months is the minimum. I think I want you to have worked together. So would we by now have our own accommodation together, or would we still be living somewhere? It depends who you uh, I mean, depends who you mm. work for and what you decide. Because I feel like it makes sense that you're probably all bunked together in the sense of this is how you make See, money. Yeah. Having property of your own in the city is unlikely, right? Yeah, mm. yeah, I could get a hammock. Um, obviously, technically, somebody has family in the city, in the party. So there is that. Who, who has family? Uh, tell them. No uh, one has family. I, I have Yuan-Ti pure blood nobles that are technically family, but yeah, they, they, they are your adoptive parents. Yeah, like you still have their name. They don't have anything to do with me, and they would never speak with me. But they're technically but do you family. Have their name. Do you know if they have any property in the area that they don't use that we can <laughs> that we can kind of... just steal? They have loads of property, but they won't let me use it. Could we do it on the sly, though? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, yeah. I, th I don't think my character would be against that. Hmm. It just it gives us somewhere that we can all actually camp down together without spending coin. It does mean if we and... got caught, there'd be consequences. Yeah, but, I mean, would you get a kick from, you know, freeloading? Also, your... here's a thing that I put in, right? Would, yeah. Who in the party is rare? Raise your hand. Then tell me if you raised your hand. I raised my hand. hand. I didn't hear what you... Sorry, Ryan, what did... I said, who in the party is rare? Me. So, the answer is everyone, right? Because mm -hmm. everyone is rare. I think the least rare person is somewhere between Thea and Alvin. Because yeah. Thea looks human, for the most part. And yeah. Alvin is a gnome. And gnomes <laughs> probably outnumber the rest, um, except mm -hmm. humans and elves. So you wouldn't be able to hide using something illegally in a city mm. that well to do because these are all giant obvious things. <laughs> except <laughs> Alvin. He's small obvious. True. <laughs> so and it's more likely that... Is as well. Well, all of, yeah, like all of you are kind of... I think Fleabite is a best kept under cloak problem um, 
for the most part. Um, whoever Fleabout found first out of the group, uh, Fleabout was definitely being picked on by people within the city. Um, most definitely being attacked by the, them because they look like a rat monster. No offence, Fleabout. But yeah, so I feel like it's more likely that you work for someone providing accommodation or yeah. user working as a group that have accommodation legally because that removes the well everyone tries to sneak around but we're we have eight foot elephants with us and people that explode occasionally sometimes deliberately we could be oddballs for our jobs <laughs> your job oddballs that's gonna get, balls. that's gonna get mispronounced at some point could um, we, oh yeah could we be a band that used to have enough money to be able to like buy our way into like an accommodation but are slowly running out of and so are kind of desperate to look for yeah a i new think that's some coin. it's not the worst suggestion is that maybe use maybe use did a couple of jobs for some nobles in the past because of like cognax like connections initially where he was willing to cash in on that since he said he's willing to cash in on their houses so far like maybe there was <laughs> something that got you enough money that you set up your own place right like i don't know, let's say it was a warehouse she's repurposed right maybe near the the water um studio apartment love it um so warehouse i'm just gonna take some notes here near the water uh, and i'm just gonna say he's probably outright bought this place um i just wrote out bought but that's fine so he's bought outright this kind of warehouse uh it's pretty much where you have set up shop i uh, however he's probably just took it easy for a bit because you had some yeah. like loose cash, so you obviously lounge around, and maybe this is the first mission you've all done, right? This one that you are on just now, um, that you've done in a long time, um, like from your lockdown vacation, um, mm -hmm. with all your monies, and you just went. Mm. Actually, we might want to keep paying the the bills and have food, so I guess we'll go and check the yield quest board in town that for some reason exists because it's the video game world um <laughs> so yeah you all went off on this quest to help researchers at one of the ruins it was like an expedition from one of the universities to go to some of the ruins to go check out um just again theories some of the students have about obviously ancient genasi uh, that's a thing you thought oh cool that's easy money babysitting right so mm -hmm. You all went and did that. Also, mm -hmm. of course, my knowledge would help so much with that. <laughs> yeah, if you were the type of person to share that. Um, Which I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I think who in the group got that quest for everyone because you would probably all have went out looking for work one day and then somebody would have found that and thought, here is what we do. And perhaps the gymnasium. I yeah, I would like to sell that to the group as, come on, I'm Genasi, they're going to dig up some of my old ancestors. You know, we're fine for that. Yeah, so obviously he's all signed up yeah. to that. He's had to go. It's an easy pass. Ewan's going to click with Q activated at some point to get rid of his horrible measured penis. Thank you. It was <laughs> an elephant, man. Yeah. That's what you tell um, people, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, we... Uh, <laughs> You know I was serious because I said you and not louder. <laughs> so you all headed off to babysit, right? It took a bit of time to get there because it was a wee, a wee ex expedition off uh, to the middle of nowhere. Obviously, you'll have a better navigation once I can be arsed drawing maps for this shit. Um, once I get an <laughs> idea of how all of this this world works, I'll try and throw together a map. It'll be terrible, but it'll be functional. And uh, you just like the real world. Yeah, right. I, it probably took a couple of weeks to get there with everybody in tow and students wanting to stop constantly to set up camp. And then uh, by the time you got there, uh, they probably had plans to stay for like at least a week, right? So you were babysitting for about a week. Um, it wasn't offering much money, but you know it would get your names in with one of the universities, which could offer consistent money. So that's mm -hmm. something. Um, I think we will name that uni at some point down the line as well. I, I'll write down uni and babysitting job so I don't forget that. Um, however, a couple of the Can students... Can the University of Gymnastics? I, 
It could be. It probably won't be though. But it <laughs> could be. Exist. Um, and yeah, so after a couple of days into the the kind of study that they set up, a couple of the students decide to try and like poke a bit further in. You know that part where the music changes and uh, the two people sneak off on their own and accidentally wake something up, something that was old. Um, can everyone roll a d20 for me? Just a flat d20 in the chat for me. Now, oh, for you... fuck's sake, seriously? <laughs> First roll of the game and that's a bloody one. Sorry, my screen has gone completely blank, so bear with me. Rar. Yeah, Rar. Roll, roll 20 <laughs> is not responding for me. Um, I think my laptop timed out. <laughs> it's okay. We'll wait on you. I'm just Sorry. happy to have a roll without, like, a negative... A modifier, roll. yeah. <laughs> mm. Ah, that's why he didn't ask you to roll perception. <laughs> I'm just happy to get my bad, my, my bad roll out the way first. You know. I hope you have a backup. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I've already yeah. started mine. <laughs> uh, who are we waiting on? Only waiting on one, aren't we? Um, it's probably just me. I'm yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that. I don't mind waiting to see how we we got on. That's fine. And um, right, we're using the computer to do this. So on my character sheet, what am I clicking just to roll? I, no, you can just go to see the, the, the that panel at the left again. See, there's a dice. Mm -hmm. Go in there. There's a d20 button. I keep forgetting about the buttons. Hmm. Got it. Sorry, are you talking about the speech chat and the? Nope. Where, the, where the cursor and the the measure tool and the, the the draw tool is on that side. Oh, I saw it. It's a dice so second from the bottom. Right. So D twenty. Perfect. I cool. believe I have. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, I think. <laughs> Based on this, I think Alvin and Thea, yeah. for whatever reason, obviously decided to go with these other two students, right, that had this great idea of going, what if we poked deeper into these ruins? <laughs> I mean, that would go with like fun. Yeah. Well, I mean, the I chaos of Thea's philosophy, right, followed by the curiosity Change of Alvin. Pace. So, yeah. I think, I like uh, it. I think like, that would play out like kind of to be these couple of students. I mean... Surely we'd find better stuff deeper on, deeper in the thing. And I'd just, wait, Alvin, did you deeper? tell them? I think you told them to go deeper. I think that is yes. exactly what Even happened. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, guys. It's like... You won't find anything wait, good. But, and then it dawns like, on me that this is a great idea as well. It's like, yeah, we're finding some stuff here, but there's a big hole there. Let's go down that one. That will have stuff, right? Right? Let's go. It's all the nice lava. The, the uh, one with the bones and stuff sticking out of it. Yeah, that's a good place to go. Exactly. Bones mean adventure. The one that says in blood, <laughs> do not enter. Um, <laughs> so adventure blood. means chaos! I think um, Cognac, uh, Sleepy, and Adair, you were definitely maybe like patrolling the place, like maybe doing perimeter stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Fleabag probably definitely, because you probably didn't like the students, I feel. I am, Relatable. Yeah. I am. But yeah, as for... I keep just seeing Yoon as the name in this. Uh, Lyuda. There we go. Lyuda. Uh, I don't know. What, what were you doing? It's okay. I don't need to change it. It's fine. I'll just try and look at Discord instead. Uh, mm -hmm. The the students probably are kind of fascinated by like all of you, right? Because you are such a weird collection of entities being on this babysitting job. Where they're like, we're not really paying enough money for this variation of people to have wanted to do this. So why are they here? I am. Um, so there's probably a lot to talk about you guys as a, you know, on this particular mission. I again it's the why we're all patrolling because we don't want to be talked about. Probably, or you want to bitch about them as well, right? Equally, mm. um, you know, damn whippersnappers. And uh, mm. that's the thing, right? Um, as for obviously Adair, maybe you wanted to keep like, have you made it expressive well, that you're? Um, well, I can visualise myself being in a tent surrounded by students while I talk complete shit. Yeah, like actually just making history. up I have, complete lies. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea about my history, but I'm talking shit. 
And I'm assuming they have provisions with them such as alcohol, maybe some wine. Well, I was um, about to say, like, like the, the age range of this group isn't particularly that old. Uh, it's probably discouraged to drink uh, on these trips. That has not stopped about 80% of them. So, yes. yeah, I think... <laughs> Did um, it stop in the Allison school? You're... No. You're, um, this is when you can start to tell about the Scottish percentage of the players in this group. <laughs> and then, um, <laughs> wow. And uh, yeah. myself included. And then uh, you've got, as I said, Adair, I think, give me a deception check with advantage because you are Genasi, so they're likely to believe your bullshit about Genasi runes more. Um, so on your character sheet, remember at the top, okay. yep. there's a toggle for I'm normal just advantage. Just opening, unfortunately. My laptop has That's completely okay. slowed down. I'm just again making sure I say it out loud because everybody else might have forgot to. And then give us a deception check when you can. <laughs> do, oh, do, do, I did not realize my laptop was this bad. Do, do, Scotty, do, do. can you fix my laptop next time you're around? He's not here just now. He's not here. Five months. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn it! <laughs> no, he's BRB'd. So no. I say somebody else can just roll for you. Yeah, like a minus two on the modifier. No, if you're struggling, yeah, I I'm, if you can do it, you can do no, it. No, uh, my character sheet has now opened, so I'm going to go down to option. If let me. It's almost like someone's running in the background, but there's not. Uh, it's bloatware. I was going to say, if it's Windows 10, it's Windows 10 running in the background. Yeah, uh, yeah it's Windows 10. <laughs> right, uh, there we go. So, deception. So, I just click on the word deception. and it will Have you toggled to... advantage? I have not. Click that first. So, I need to. And we'll just see how well your bullshit stories go over it. Because, <laughs> I mean, they've probably been drinking. They're, you've probably said you'll tell them stuff that they can write in their papers if you give you booze. Yeah. If, like, they, so, yeah. if they supply yeah, you with booze. Yeah. Well, okay. yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's not even you. Oh, oh wait. <laughs> why, why, why are you rolling? How dare you? So your deception's oh, bad, I'm so buddy. Sorry, this is that's, really that's, that's really Do you want bad. me to roll for you? I can go into Look, your sheet and roll. I'm gonna close the other uh, windows, uh, the five E stuff, the Google cool. Drive. I'm gonna roll for you then up. while you're waiting. Please do, yeah, because this is so slow. There you go. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. oh wow! <laughs> do I want to know what just happened? Oh, you got no, that's, that's good. It's it's real good. You rolled a fifty-six. <laughs> Gee, I hope they believe me. <laughs> <laughs> is yeah, some of the worst possible you could have gotten. The good thing is he didn't spend his advent, it was his inspiration to do it. It was a free advantage yeah. he got from yeah. being Genasi. I think though how that translates is the drink was obviously supplied initially to help him, like you know, saying, "Well, give me a couple of hits of that, whatever that is that you're clearly getting high on, and I will uh, happily start telling you the people stories of my people, etc." And then, oh, uh, do I suddenly start speaking in Genasi? That way they have no idea what the fuck I'm saying. No, I think it's worse. It's, you just start <laughs> saying things that clearly would never have happened. Like, so such obvious things that are, like, beyond the scope of your, like, believable. You try and bullshit them too much. And I think mm. a lot of them are like, nah, man, this guy knows fuck all, you know? Like, oh, no. um, which is true, I've though, because you do know very little. No. about your genasi yeah. people but yeah it was still a valiant effort and you probably still got enough to get uh, yourself merry enough to maybe be a liability you know so <laughs> you're good but Bloody hell. mark your liability counter now there's a um, is jealous <laughs> there's maybe a couple of people that are still kind of enamored by the idea of a genasi i am mm -hmm. still maybe happy to sit and drink with you during that but yeah i think for the most part it's, they don't believe me. No, most of them have left now because they realise they're not going to get an A from the bullshit you're giving them. Oh, yeah. well. That'll be a I tried. You did. You definitely did. Um, this is where everybody says I fixed that because of being the GM. So it's mm. fine. Um, as for obviously the, the people on patrol, it is probably like that reason's because people want to stay out of the way of how strange it is for like a turtle to be discussed. Um, I think as well, maybe because some of them are quite young, maybe that bugs Cognac in the sense of, like, these are people with, you know, well, they weren't sold think, off, right? Um, that's probably true, but another part would be, like, um, their lives are so easy 
their their only yeah. cares are are their studies, and they don't have any other things. Just goes off and screams off the cliff or something like that. Just <laughs> ah! some edge lord thing, yeah. <laughs> brooding. Um, if that's the case, then does Fleabite like go over with? Uh, sorry, Cognac, or does Fleabite like patrol elsewhere on their own? Um, yeah, probably stick to to the um the, to to Cognac. Just try and like you know, it's better that there's someone else there to possibly get stabbed. Yeah, and is there like a a particular subject of conversation that comes up between the two of you when you are kind of like patrolling back and forth? Because it is just it is literally like a babysitting job. So yeah, most places in between major cities are like considered wild. So yeah, it, it can be fairly dangerous. Anything between the two of you that comes up? Um, I'm probably just retreat slightly into my shell and uh, turn to. <laughs> Sorry. Turn to flee by and just complain about the bloody younglings that have too much free time and nothing to taking their attention away from a waste um a waste of time. Ah, yes, yes. Must get a flea. Should be out. Fight, fight. Ah. <laughs> and like, does um. What's Cognac's opinion of Fleabite, right? Um, a strange curiosity. Um, mm. Obviously he knows he's not from here and that he's he's not like anything else that he's, he's seen before. And he feels like a, a, a definite bond with him there. Well, there's but... a question, right? Fleabite, have you actually told anyone that you're not from here? That's a question. It's um, maybe important because that wouldn't be known. It might just be that like he's a weird. Yeah. So it's maybe just that. I, I've never seen. I'm, I'm always like... like referencing things that are not in this world, and mm -hmm. the things that you do understand is like clearly I've got. Are you like maybe picked that up with your time because you're kind of cut off on us there? Yeah, it was probably they've probably picked up on that I'm not from around here, but I've never. I'm not sure I've even yeah, but like that doesn't really realize. I was gonna say that might not mean that they've explored the whole world though. At the same time, you know, there is probably still races out there that you don't know of. So I don't think you'd instinctively I, think he's from another reality, right? I just I, mean I probably think like just see a kindred spirit. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't see him as yeah, like an outcast with you. Yeah. Just yeah. Just to. We're both not from here or anywhere near here. Yeah, you've not had an easy life either of you either. So yeah, I, that does I, make I sense. I like to listen to what he says because it never makes sense. I think then I like the idea that maybe that's you were the first person to meet Fleabite then, right? I am um, since there was an accident in the city, I uh, and then Fleabite was obviously attacked by people within the city. Um, the following few days and weeks and whatnot. So I think maybe you were the first person to find to find him and maybe like I don't know if it was just an excuse to fight people or it felt like a noble thing to do to stand up for somebody that's a bit different um, but how do you feel about that because that does make sense to me based on that I'm yeah. happy with that mm -hmm. um, um, perhaps I also showed... like in in my <laughs> world you know like reptile people is kind of not that weird so I'd probably just be like ah oh, it's one of them even though it's not the same at all it's yeah just, it's right. close enough yeah <laughs> No, that makes sense, yeah. Maybe maybe he was getting beaten and I stepped in and showed my signet ring. I'm just like, he's under my protection, even though that didn't really mean anything because the family didn't care. But the signet ring, ring was enough. Yeah, it could easily be that. Or like it could be like scared of obviously the family name and influence, or it could even just be you screamed and ran in with a, a sword or a club. <laughs> like it easily, either or, right? Maybe you showed the signet ring and it didn't have an effect, and then you just beat them up anyway. Or you showed them the signet ring, it did have the effect, but then you just chose to beat them up. I don't really mind. I am. Um, I was more certainly being beaten up. Yeah. I am. Um, I think. I think what we know is a guarantee is that Fleabite was beaten up. I think we know that much. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's... Um, but how how do you want that to have played out then, Cognac? Do you want it to have been, um, like a peaceful? Um, you and went okay back off. Things. I think probably the signet ring did work, but. I wind myself up into a rage 
and beat them up anyway. Was that because you saw how badly beaten up Fleabite was, or just because you didn't like them? Um, I didn't like them, and I got myself caught in a negative spiral of emotion, and had an outburst. Okay. So, yeah, possibly um, hospitalised a couple of random street thugs uh, that picked on poor Fleabite. But no, brilliant. I like that, though. I think that's quite a good... Um, a good like first interaction between the two of you. So that's that was like probably the first person. Maybe that's why Fleabite kinda sticks to you a bit. Um because when I'm in doubt gonna, this is familiar. I'm not gonna lie, see for a minute there I kinda blanked out and I thought that he'd beat up the students. No. <laughs> and I was no. like Not no, yet. what? No. It's like, okay, roll for <laughs> initiative. <laughs> oh heck. <laughs> <laughs> and so it begins. Oh god. Um, Murder hobo time. <laughs> so Here bad. I go killing again. <laughs> <laughs> Here I go killing again. Uh, but yeah, so I think yous are off what, like, you know, complaining about babysitting jobs. Uh, is there anything Fleabite's bringing up in the conversation or just kind of agreeing with Cognac? Yeah, that's just when I was a uh, little one and the younglings get beaten, beaten every day, day. Yeah, we must the teach, younglings. Teach. Mmm, what you said. <laughs> Love it. And then, uh, Stop it, Scotty. Yeah. Also, every time he's posting it, I get a beep in my ear. I hope you just know this. Um, it's lovely. Beep. Um, beep. Now, it's not an excuse that everybody starts typing, ideally. I um, <laughs> guess, my God, is it glorious yeah. Uh, yeah so you're off having that kind of like conversation <laughs> perfect Q Q Q. Uh, or bob 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 for callum's yeah <laughs> <laughs> no um, oh he's so gross um right who have we not seen right so louder so um, you can yeah i was gonna say you can choose to go off and patrol or mingle on your I role. think that to everybody else in the area, Lyoda looks like he's joining in in the field trip and having a look around the ruins, but <laughs> in in reality um, Lyoda is just fascinated by how nature is growing around these ruins and um, sort of reclaiming its space. Yeah, because I mean, I think can you give me a history check, Lyoda? Yep. Give me one second. And I'll see how much we can justify on this. Let's have a look. Yeah, um, you're probably aware more than most about the fact that like Janassi, much it's probably because obviously the like the the city of Barris is a fairly advanced and well kept records type city. Uh, that mm. maybe during your time in there, still you you were taught about the fact that like the like Barris is only really it was inspired by the once great Janassi, but the reason why they don't want to like suffer the same fate as them is like they feel like the Janassi just overreached, right? Mm -hmm. Like the Janassi tried to take the world instead of just secure the one part they know they could take, which is what the, the city of Barris did. Um, yeah. Like that's just like one big, as I said, like city nation. Uh, yeah. So there is probably a bit of intrigue for like a Loxodon here, purely because of, you know, this is like the inspiration for your people to be the way they are, and kind of why you're out here in the first place, which is maybe a bit surreal. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so you definitely know a tiny bit about uh, Janassi. I, I wouldn't say anything in any great detail, other than there were four of them. They all fell out at one point, and kind of that was their undoing because it was one big Janassi nation and then it all kind of fell apart annoyingly uh, mm -hmm. in, in the long distance past it was it. and then the fire Janassi attacked um, <laughs> uh, but no, that, that isn't what happened, nobody actually talks about what caused the divide um, and because Janassi are so rare now like they're not generally old enough to know uh, or if they do know, they don't really want to talk about it. So it's not a thing that comes up often, annoyingly. It's just one of these great questions that people go, what if this was the reason the divide happened? Dot, dot, dot. Uh, so yeah, that's maybe another reason why you're maybe kind of half interested in the runes here as well. Um, 
I think you know enough to know that this was probably an Earth Genasi specific offshoot. So this was like maybe one of the cities that like kind of was created after the divide, or at least would have been. So you probably know enough sure. about that as well. I am. Um, the thing. Uh, back with our amazing ideas team. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> Alvin obviously goes, you know, if you just wanted to get an A plus, the good stuff will be inside. And I just happen to have this thing here pulls out some random device and goes, and if I put that under this rock in that doorway, maybe we could get inside. So whatever I uh, Alvin actually does. Uh, he encourages some uh, unwarranted exploration by some of the students. And Thea, I assume you were just like nearby or listening or whatever. Yeah, just kind of hovering around. Um, not literally hovering. I do not think <laughs> he can hover. Um, are you, you going to try and like convert some students to the way of chaos? Yeah. Like I think. I think. Well, if he can, if he can convince students to do then stuff, then so can I. <laughs> But yeah, so you like, use both like work on new students and be like, let's go inside. And mostly, Alvin, it's probably for your curiosity, right? Like, it's probably purely like, oh, I get a chance to explore some shit. So, also, Scott, you're muted if you're trying to talk back to me. You might not be. No, you've muted yourself now. Well, wait, are these the students that I pissed off in the tent? And that's why they're so happy to go along with whatever they say? I, no, these are students they've been talking to anyway. Uh, the students that were in the tent are just... Like they've went back to whatever they were doing to try and get an A on this project. <laughs> um, there's like a lot of them, right? It's like a, a full, like you know, like it, as I said, it's an entire like trip, if you will. So there's maybe a gaggle, maybe forty, right? Um, it's a big gaggle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's maybe maybe forty of them. Um, so yeah. Let's go on an adventure. La 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 la. So did you hear any of what I said, Scott? Yeah, about me doing a thing. Cool. Uh, so I was saying, what like tell me what what made you want to go inside? Simple. The further you go, the more likely you are to find stuff and bigger stuff and stuff and there's adventure. And obviously, as a rock gnome, you know the better stuff's kept deeper, right? Yeah. Because obviously, your people live underground. So mm. that does. But it's also that kind of way. I'm just like, we ain't finding anything new up here. This is like the enjoyment of it, or not the excitement of being here is kind of worn off. I'm like, let's go down there. More excitement, mm -hmm. <laughs> more reasons to do things, opportunities. Yeah. So yeah, you make your way inside, right? Obviously, is it a clever, sneaky way inside, Alvin, or is it a very dramatic rock caving in? Type no, way? it's uh, if I kick this rock right here boom and then it just kind of like crumbles and then it's like no passageway yep so then obviously like you Thea and I, like as I said maybe two or three students like head inside um, you only get in so far before more rumbling happens and then some of the kind of runes on the wall like just start shimmering um, and then the entire place think... starts to like collapse like the tunnel in front of you like starts to like collapse i i don't suggest you stay and try and fight the tunnel i'd recommend you maybe back out um so he's trying to grab the students pull them out i think like sorry like how it kind of plays out is like as we went in it's like the rocks start glowing in my eyes light up and like ooh, see told you told you and then as we start hearing the crumbles and just kind of look and go, oh shit, mistakes were made, run! Mm -hmm. And we just bolt. Oh, let's see, yeah. I just see I this. think, I think, <laughs> like, as it's, as, like, as we're going in, um, I think Thea would probably turn to one of the students and, like, say, always one of my favourites. He always had the best idea. And then everything would start going to shit. It's like, you always have the worst idea! <laughs> In my defense, I was left unattended. <laughs> but the rest of us hear the rumbling. Hey, yeah. So, people outside, we've got obviously that shot from inside, and everything starts to like you know cave in, and then the cameraman gets covered, and obviously 
uh, darkness and dust and then it cuts no. to the peacefulness outside um, and people off in the distance you maybe just get the silhouette of a uh, our skaven friend and our turtle friend maybe near we the just turn at each other and sigh well there's no no rumbling yet you've got that shot of yous off in the distance we've got the elephant kind of standing in the middle of the group like you know maybe just slowly walking away from people and like looking at various mosses and different stone formations and then we've got a our Janassi maybe heading out of the tent to try and like con drink out of people um, and I'd then I'd be happy to step out of the tent if people know I'm not listening to light my pipe and we puff It'd just and, be like anchors yeah so like you step out start lighting your your pipe up and then every day feels like the rumbling uh, mm -hmm. which is not ideal and then he's all kind of maybe turn to like one of the slightly more secluded entranceways and you've got a couple of students just absolutely bolting back to the, the main campsite and then uh, followed slowly by a gnome and uh, your your good priestess uh, as they flee and behind them I think aha uh -huh, behind them uh, the entranceway has in fact forward rolled into a massive earth elemental Ooh. And it starts stomping its way towards the camp. So we'll take our break there. <laughs> um, what, so Ryan can drop a map? Uh, no. I, and then we will come back at about five past nine. So I will see everybody yeah, then. Sure. Bye. 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 I'll be back soon. Bye.